we have confirmed the first uh, case of uh, Wuhan uh, novel coronavirus patient in Singapore. Cases have been confirmed across Asia, in the US, and today in France. It's not been designated a pandemic. And it's uncertain whether it has the potential to become one. Yet health experts stress that the scale of the pandemic threat is potentially catastrophic. It has not yet become a global health emergency. It may yet become one. A new strain of disease develops. Few, if any, people have immunity. Airborne human-to-human -human infection enables rapid progress through a population. Globalised travel and urban living puts rocket boosters under its spread. So how well prepared is the world to cope with a pandemic? Well, epidemics such as this are, are controlled by standard procedures, which include identification and isolation of those who are infected and sick. The second is to trace all of their contacts. And then the third is to make sure that other means of control can be employed. And sometimes that includes um, requiring people not to travel or asking them to postpone travel. This is the latest invention in the fight against SARS. Scares over SARS in 2003, bird flu in 2006, and swine flu in 2009, and also Ebola and Zika in recent years, have focused policymakers' minds on the need for pandemic preparation. The World Health Organization has established a global influenza surveillance network covering 105 countries as a planetary alert mechanism. But it's one thing knowing what the right procedures are, it's another thing ensuring that they are carried out. Last year, a group called the Global Preparedness Monitoring Board, convened by the WHO and the World Bank, warned of major gaps in our pandemic preparedness. It cited a lack of long-term, holistic, costed resource mobilisation plans. It said that not a single country's preparedness plan had been fully funded. Further, it warned that the WHO itself was underfunded, hindering its ability to provide a global safety net. There's clearly a gap in funding, and the funding for developing capacity to detect and respond to outbreaks um, is not being funded by national governments in many developing countries, nor is there complementary funding coming in from development agencies. The World Health Organization is always underfunded. Their budget is, uh, is very little compared to responsibilities that they have. Some experts stress that when it comes to protecting ourselves from pandemics, there's a danger in placing all our focus on short-term emergency responses. You also need in the long run a sustained focus on building and strengthening healthcare systems at the national level everywhere, but obviously particularly in countries that don't have strong healthcare systems at the moment. So for an international response, to be able to effectively support in a crisis situation, you need people on the ground who are well trained to support this response, to, to know what to do in an emergency situation. But you also need a population who, is, who trusts the local health system, who so will actually listen to crisis communications. They will go and seek help uh, in healthcare facilities. So is our planet prepared for a pandemic? To answer confidently in the affirmative, we may also need to see this hyper-connected world of ours become considerably more equal in terms of access to decent, basic health care. I 
等于等于他下去哦，好等着下去了。Infection spreads between humans easily. It's actually very difficult to bring the epidemic under control. We don't want to overstate the panic here, because there is so much uncertainty, and we want to keep a sort of calm, moderated approach to it. But we do have to take this incredibly seriously. Here in the U.S., the CDC now confirming a second case: a woman in Chicago. In fact, 63 patients are now being tested here in the U.S. for possible symptoms across 22 states. An alarming new video tonight from China showing patients crowded into Wuhan Red Cross Hospital. The staff in hazmat suits. Tonight, China reporting dozens of deaths, more than 900 people infected worldwide. And tonight, China has ordered a new hospital be built in just 10 days. Here's ABC's Steve Osinsami. Government health officials tonight say that without a doubt, more Americans will be diagnosed with this deadly virus in the coming days. The latest confirmed case here is a woman in her 60s from Chicago. She returned from China last week and felt sick three days later. She has limited close contacts, all of whom are currently well and who will be monitored closely for symptoms. Another American patient in Seattle who was hospitalized in a biocontainment unit could be released in a few days. We use the highest level of protection that we have available to treat this patient as one would. Uh, Ebola. The CDC is now running tests on 63 sick patients from 22 states, including one at Texas A&M in College Station. Health officials are going to be terribly busy at these five U.S. airports when flights from the affected regions in China resume. Already, they've screened more than 2,000 travelers. This is a scene from the Seattle International Airport. Passengers tell us the gift shops ran out of face masks early this morning. Our focus right now is on travelers returning from Wuhan, but the situation is changing rapidly and we're continuing to assess and we'll make new guidance if needed. From the center of this outbreak, the Chinese are now rushing to build a new hospital from the ground up in just 10 days. Dozens of workers are there now with heavy equipment. There is this disturbing video posted on social media from Wuhan's Red Cross Hospital. Those are medical staff members in hazmat suits and covered bodies lying on the floor. Today is the biggest holiday in the country, the Chinese New Year, and cities in the hot zone are on lockdown. Police are armed with long guns, making sure no one enters or leaves. Our correspondent Ian Panel is traveling through the region. All but two provinces in China now have cases. Pretty much the whole province of Hubei, which is the epicenter, is in lockdown. All airports, rail, buses and river ports. That's around 30 million people effectively grounded. At least 41 people have died, more than 900 infected. The virus has spread as far as France, where there are now at least three known cases. Let's get to Steve. He's in Atlanta at the CDC tonight. And Steve, flights from the region where the outbreak originated from are, are no longer coming into the U.S. That'll be reassuring here at home. And while the virus has spread to several other countries, officials are urging calm globally and here in the U.S. Well, David, health officials are here at the CDC say they're approaching this as a serious threat to public health. But at the same time, they say based on the information they have in front of them at this point, they believe that the general risk to the American public is low. David? We will